Thank you to um, Wild Labs for giving me the chance to be part of the meetup today. And thanks to all of you for joining. So I will start with a bit of context. What are biologging data? By biologging data, are you seeing the, the screen on here? Let me move those over here. Okay, by biologging data, I'm talking about data collected by sensors on animals. And why do we consider those big data? Oh, hang on, there we go. So every sensor deployment starts with a capture of an animal and that capture event is similar tr to traditional species occurrence events where we might have one or a few time points for an individual. However, because we can use those sensors to monitor that animal over time, we can collect all this information about its location, behavior, maybe health or external conditions over time. So in this case, we end up from that one capture, we end up with 120,000 events over an eight month period. So you can see the volume adds up quickly. Now, how are people currently managing these kinds of data? Often on local computers or in shared institutional servers. And then there's a lot of really great online databases that are shared among different communities. And these have different scopes and purposes. And I highly recommend using these. Um, I will talk about MoveBank. This is the one that I know best. So MoveBank is an online platform hosted by the Max Planck Institute for Ornithology. And it's open for anyone to use. So it's not restricted by your species, source of funding, study region, or method of data collection. It's a global database and uh, for biologging and animal tracking data, and researchers use it as a tool for different stages in the data life cycle. As you can see, we've had a steady growth in users and taxa over time, but a much faster growth in the number of locations and other sensor events in the database. So that reflects both that growth in users, but also much bigger growth in, in we have increasingly high resolution data that people are collecting. So next I'll talk about some key needs I see for biologging data tools for conservation applications. Now, a first question I always get is who is paying for it? In the case of MoveBank, as in with most of these other shared databases, the funding, uh, there's government funding. So MoveBank has long-term support, or yeah, long-term support from the Max Planck Society and University of Constance in Germany. And then other developments have been covered by different grants over the years, but it's free to the user. Second are, how do I make sure my data are secure? And then I'm able to share it with people that I want to share it with. So in MoveBank, users always retain ownership of their data and they can choose to share it with three different user groups. One would be specific users that they assign as data managers. The second would be specific users they assign as collaborators with read access. And then the third group would be everybody else or the public. So this gives you the option to do anything from be the only person who knows that the, your study exists on MoveBank or to allow even the public to view or download and use the data. And so one plug I'll put in here would be, I sometimes get requests for additional options to this. They tend to be very study specific, but if there are options we could add here that would be widely relevant for conservation work, I would love to hear about it. Third, next would be if we are actively managing wildlife, we have specific needs because we can't wait for a year to collect data and then spend a month processing it. We need to have that real-time data coming in and we need to be able to get it immediately and start working with it and even respond in the field. In MoveBank, we have, we allow automated data feeds for about 15 different uh, tag companies that we've worked with to set up these feeds. And so you can go and you subscribe to have data brought into your study several times per day and you can get email notifications. And so you can have those data being fed directly into your study. And then of course you can view those data and manage the deployments, manage outliers, so that you can have a fully organized study available to you as the data are coming in. Then the next thing you wanna do is access those data and use it in other programs, other places. So from MoveBank, you can 
always download your data. You can download as a CSV, as a shapefile. We have uh, EMF data. It's an environmental data annotation tool that lets you choose and annotate from um, hundreds of environmental variables. And then we have for mobiles, we have an animal tracker app. And then we have an API. And so that API allows other people to build tools that access data in MoveBank. So for example, these two R packages here, these use that API so that you can go in R, log in the MoveBank and pull your data and work with it directly. Another challenge is working with uh, managed animals where we might have multiple uh, agencies or governments both collecting data and administering the management. So how do we bring those data together? So one example of how we've done this in MoveBank is with the Animals on the Move project, which is part of the much larger NASA-funded Arctic Boreal vulnerability experiment. And here we've brought together on MoveBank 50 different animal movement data sets owned by about 30 collaborating institutions. So each one of those data sets has its own study with its own study specific access restrictions. So in the end, we have a pretty large database we've put together. However, in many cases, these agencies would not necessarily even share those data with each other. So we have them in one platform and what each of those data owners is able to do is grant access only to the researcher doing a specific analysis that they've agreed to. And then those researchers with access to all the data in a shared format on one platform can, they're using R so they can go into R, they can log into MoveBank, pull the data, run their analysis, store that results and don't even need to store a copy of those data locally. And a few challenges, uh, I wanted to kind of end with a couple of challenges I see about, I see a key challenges in how do we support beneficial use of sensitive data over time. And so if we have data stored privately, even if they are on a shared platform, they're harder to find and access. And that prevents us from building knowledge that could inform us in our conservation work. So one thing that's widely recognized is that there's a lack of community-wide standards for biologging data. So for the past year, a bit over a year, the International Biologging Society has had a data standards working group that is actively working on community standards that could be applied ac across databases and equipment manufacturers to enable discoverability, transfer, integration, and use of biologging data. And then the last um, one I wanted to bring up, I don't hear this from people, but I see it, is how do we maintain our ability to find and access these data over time? In MoveBank, you have the option if you publish a paper and you want to publish your underlying data, we'll publish those data for you. You get a research citation, there is a permanent link to that data set, a DOI, and those get a public domain license to ensure they're available for future reuse. However, this or similar archiving only covers a minute fraction of what is out there. And of course, for sensitive data, a public domain may not be appropriate. So my question is what is our 20 or 50 year plan to maintain access to these data? I'm, I'm running into cases already where we're losing the ability to contact the only people who are authorized to grant access to private data. And so especially in the case of conservation, when data for an entire population or species might be limited to a few people, what is our responsibility to ensure that future generations will have access to this knowledge about species, behaviors, migration patterns that might be even more critically endangered or may no longer exist? And thanks to our team and thanks to you for your time. <laughs>